campaign on Total War Warhammer. All right, so we're gonna do new campaign. Select the dwarves. Continue. We're gonna take this faction leader, Thorgrim, the grudge bearer. He's gonna start out with a catapult grudge thrower unit, corollers, the crossbow unit, and then the hammerers. These guys are armored, armor piercing, and a heavy damage dealer. So let's go ahead and start the campaign. a chance for the brave to bring about an age of reckoning. I come to the Dwarf High King as a herald of such times, and so I find myself at the King's right hand. My presence is timely. But dire news comes from the south. Greenskins flock to the banner of a cruel war boss. Now, my liege, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, leads a mighty throng from Karazakarak, smashing aside any foes that block our path. desires to return the Karaz Angor to its former glory, then he must rid his lands of vile greenskins. Those gathering within the shadows of Everpeak are a good start. Karazakarak is secure, my lord High King. Faced with your terrible wrath, the Greenskins rout, as is typical of their craven nature. The bloody spears still infest the mountains to the east, setting up their hovels amidst your sacred pillars. Another grudge that must be put right, and soon for the lords of the other dwarf holds will not tolerate a high king that cannot secure his own realms. To the south, yet more vicious Urki and Groby lay ready to strike at your kin. Seek allies amongst your own folk, for there are many grudges to settle here. The world shall be in thrall to the Karaz Angkor once more, and no creature, greenskin or otherwise, shall stand in your way. All right. All right, so we got some missions already here. Grudge issued, the trespassing greenskin grudge. So, in order to win, we need to account for all of these grudges against us. So, the uh, 
be held by the engraved graves of Grimner that blood spears have trespassed with impunity all over the sacred mountains. Their forces gathered to the east and must be defeated in battle before their strength is regained. So we have to defeat an army belonging to the following faction, Bloody Spears, and we'll get a thousand as a reward. And we'll also scratch out one of the grudges that we have in our vast book of grudges. Alright, so fortunately... These deeds committed against your kind are recorded in the venerable book of grudges. The Damas Kron. The Damas Kron. documented. No transgression should remain unpunished, my king. Yep. So fortunately, we can bring them to justice by attacking that bloody spear tribe right here. Alright, so let's take a quick look at our city as well. We're gonna need two population surplus in order to build larger. And we don't have a requirement on population surplus for other structures like some factions do, so all we have to do is upgrade the primary chain and we'll be able to unlock stronger buildings and get better units. So we already can upgrade here and get ourselves to quarrelers. Right now we just have miners with blast charges and standard miners as well as dwarf warriors. So if we get to the quarrelers and quarrelers with great weapons, we'll have to select that clan barracks. We also have some military support buildings. These will get us to a runesmith. We get a master engineer through the engineer workshop. And this will also give us organ guns and iron drakes. And then we can get our gyro bomber, gyrocopters, etc. here. Alright, so the armory is going to give us long beards, quarrelers, slayers, dwarf warriors, uh, iron breakers, hammerers come up from the next upgrade. So we got a couple different options we can go with. I'm, I want to do the gyrocopters. I think those are pretty cool. So I'm going to have to get to a tier 4 before I can unlock that. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade to Clan Barracks here. And we have Gem Mine Shaft, a Barley Field, Trading dep Depot. Let's go ahead and do Trading Depot. That'll allow us to do some trade. And we're getting low on coins, so let's go to war here. I declare war on them. So we're about loaded up here on our first battle. Alright, so here we have Thorgrim, and he's being carried. Because he's a heavy man, can't carry his own weight, it looks like. He's got a big ol' axe and four shield bearers. Alright. Let's stick our catapult to the front line here and open up on him. A neat trick with the, the cannons and the artillery weapons is you can hold the alt key down and you can manually select the ground that you want to fire on. So if I want to fire on this location knowing they're going to walk into it, I'll just alt and right click. And so you saw how we damaged some of those guys. We've got to order a different command though, otherwise they're going to keep firing like that. So if I want to fire a little bit more in front, and you can kind of get an idea of like, the speed of the armies and where you want to fire to. Uh oh. They stopped short, so I may not hit them. So we've got our quarrelers open it up on them. Miners! Vengeance! 
Engaging hand to hand now. Let's bring up our general. We got our grudge throwers attacking the arrow boys back there. If I can get our general to thread the needle here, he can run right through there. I might be able to smack these guys in the flank. And let's see how powerful this guy is. Wow, look at him. Really just banging his way in there. Looks like our dwarf warriors are getting a little close to breaking. We'll take our dwarf warriors over to this. These hammers are, <laughs> are taking quite a bit of damage too. Let's go ahead and attack. Try to get these quarrelers to fire down on the archers. Now that these guys are routing, I'm going to try to run into the back of the other unit. So one thing you got to worry about with these dwarves being as strong as they are with the leadership and their armor, you can see I'm getting pretty low on units. They're down to 18. He's right about ready to retreat and could die to this general of theirs. You're going to want to fall them back before they just get obliterated. If you leave them to keep fighting, they might fight until the last man and then you lose the entire unit. So I want to keep these guys so I can bring them out in the next fight. And so now I'm fighting their general with my general. And he's running them down. He's almost like a mounted unit. Uh, he lays out some pretty good, strong, single target attack. I wonder if he's faster. Almost like a mounted unit. If I scroll over him. Well, is he gonna catch him? Maybe not. So let's go ahead and open up fire. With our quarrelers. He he is looking like he's catching up a little bit. So I might want to try running past him. So you can speed it up, so I'm going to fast forward and see if he can catch this guy. He just knocked him down, so things are looking good. Might smack him down. Nashrak, you're going down, buddy. You can't get away from the grudge. You done trespassed on our lands, and now you need to pay with blood. It's the only way we'll wash it out from the... Domicron. Uh-oh, he's getting away. I think my, my fatty's tired. He's exhausted. Oh, no, he's getting away. All right, let's go ahead and turn. There's no catching him now. We ran out of juice. Uh, but you can see he's nearly dead. And the next battle we have with that army should annihilate them completely. All right, so... We've got two options. We can execute the captives. That'll give us plus four to leadership. These brave Dawi are celebrated after another wrong has been put right. And then we've got the other option to release the captives. The grudge has been settled. The honorable thing to do is allow the captives to leave. Not that it matters, but the enemy will look upon us favorably. Treasury is 348, so you get money there.
I fix it. Alright, so we'll get released captives for one turn. Your army will gain the following effects. The throng looks to hearth. Casualty replenishment rates are minus 5%. So we'll take a little bit of a hit to getting our guys healed up and ready to go again. So execute and get a bonus or get a penalty plus 348 in coin. Uh, let's go for the coin. March. So we got paid off the thousand, and uh, the grudge has been marked out of the book. The Groby maintain one of their slum camps beneath the pillars of Grundy, a sin that cannot remain in the Damas Kron any longer. The pillars must be returned to Dwarfen hands. All right, so there we have. We got another grudge we need to settle. Retake the realm. And it looks like the High King we might have some trouble going after that right away. So why don't we recruit a few more units? We will get some Dwarf Warriors. It looks like they get a little bit better leadership, a little bit better weapon strength, and their defense is quite considerably raised. So we'll go ahead and do two, three, three units there. And that ought to give us what we need to carry the carry the tide against not only this army we bloodied, but also the garrison here at their other village. And look here, we've got technologies. We can go ahead and click on technologies. And the way of the guilds and the way of the clans. So we can go with recruitment cost reductions, or we can go with public order increasement and income settlements. So I'm going to go with public order. I think it's a good thing to have my people be happy and obedient. And then we'll end turn. But before we do that, select our unit that just got leveled up. We got a couple options here. Full plate gives him extra armor. That sounds like a good idea. Keep him alive a bit longer. And end turn we will. Oh, great book of grudges. Can't can't look go on without looking at that. <clears throat> so the pillars of Grungi. And then I think after that, we'll be out of grudges. So that's one of the requirements in order to win as dwarfs. So we want to see to it that these grudges are crossed out as we did with the trespassing of the green skin grudge. And we can end turn. Okay, look at that. The green skins have moved away from their as village. You know all too well, the power of the Dawi has reverberated through these mountains for millennia. Harness that strength, and you will have all you need to restore the Karaz Angkor to its former glory. Alright, there's some motivation for us. Let's go ahead and attack the Pillars of Gundry, and then we'll, mark another grudge. we'll be grudge-free. Alright, so here we have some options for fight battle, auto-resolve, break siege, and encircle. So we can encircle and starve them out after a period of turns. They will lose out on any resources they've got, and they'll start to starve. And after those turns that they're starving are up, they'll no longer be able to stand it, and they'll come forward and either die or fight off the attackers. Well, likely they'll die after starving for those many turns. But what we're going to try out here is the auto-resolve. So we're going to left-click auto-resolve. Chances are very good. As you see, the balance of power is strong in our favor with a yellow and just a smidge of red. And you can see that they didn't really have very much money, those gabos. But we did get a, another level up on our Thorgrim Grudgebearer, our faction leader. So we'll go ahead and accept. And we've got the option to occupy, loot and occupy, sack or raise. Raising, if you're not familiar with raise, the term is to actually burn something to the ground, completely eradicate them. Sack is to take all their money and damage their structures, slaughter their people, Loot and Occupy, we're going to Occupy it, but we're going to give some booty to the, the soldiers here. And then Occupy, we peacefully take them over. So if you want to keep that, that uh, settlement and have it remain happy, you want to click Occupy. Looting and Occupying is just going to give you a lot of trouble. It'll be negative 30, and then you'll have Provincial Instability of minus 10, and it'll be one point per turn. And, but, and you only get a paltry 388. So let's go ahead and Occupy. I suppose... And that gives us one more grudge successful. We'll hit accept. Your Dawi have been put to work fixing up the captured city, sir. Yet there are many grudges still to settle. 
perfidious manlings and bloodthirsty vampires threaten your kind in the north. And your mountain will never be safe while a single green skin draws breath. To war! Alright, so we've gotten our objective issued here. We have to occupy, loot, raise, or sack three different settlements. Alright, so we've gained this one. Hunter scouts report of a greenskin migration heading northwards. Spies say they intend to meet up and swell the mobs of a dread orc warlord who travels towards the Badlands. Whatever they are up to, they must be stopped. Summon the throng. Alright, so ambush at the Thundering Falls. So if we can win this objective, we'll end up with an item, Dragon Helm. That's right, your generals actually gain armor, weapons, equipment, uh, banners, etc. Much like other Warhammer uh, games in the past. So you're going to want to accumulate these. And they have different uh, rarities. So you can see this Dragon Helm has a common written next to it. So you can actually get rares, uh, etc. on commons. So we also will get a hero recruited at Kareza Karak. A runesmith. So that sounds like a wizard unit. So we're gonna go ahead and accept. Yes! Our guys are healing up. We've got some enemies over here. We can sack those guys. And we've got some dwarven guys down here. We're still working on our trade center. Two more turns before that'll be operational. And the, uh, the pillars of grungy. Looking at some of the items here. So you'll notice that the, the ones that require a settle. Uh, got a settlement of five in order to build. You'll only be able to do that in your capital. So we're going to reserve those for when we actually get the capital in play. Uh, everything else you can build pretty much anywhere you want. I'm thinking we would like to get an improvement to growth. Plus 15 casualty replenishment rate. Let's get some barley going. Alright. Why don't we also recruit another lord? We've got a legendary lord that it says we will have to unlock after occupying the Karak Kadrin settlement. So we'll see about getting over there. Unlock Ungrim Iron Fist. And then we've got three choices here. One's got a maimed leg, so he's going to be slow. We've got another guy that's stupid. And another guy has got a maimed arm, so he's not going to be able to hit very hard, but he's got high leadership. I'm going to go with the guy that's a little bit slow and go ahead and recruit him, Durak Gunderbach. He's got uh, plus three leadership. Time for reckoning. And we'll start recruiting some units into his army, some dwarf warriors. Send me to vengeance. And then we can end turn. Got a character skill point to assign. We've got our full plate. We can do weapon strength, hit points, melee defense, or charge bonus. So for Thorgrim, we're going to want to do... Okay, this is weapon strength only versus green skins. Let's go with hit points. Alright, ending turn. Summon me if you dare. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on that settlement here, the Bloody Spears. To battle! I declare war on them. Okay, so we got another battle where it's strongly in our favor. I'm gonna go ahead and auto resolve since we're not like to take much damage. And again, not very much money from these guys. We'll go ahead and occupy again. I agree. And we've secured the province. So what does that do for us? Securing the province, you select it. Now you see that all three are in our command. And then now we also have the ability to have commandment. So at the bottom left, we can select a uh, commandment to have Masters of Steel and Stone, which will give us construction reductions in cost, as well as recruitment and cap uh, capacity. We can also go with growth, and tax rate, and public order. So let's go with public order. And that one is actually called the Venerate, Venerate the Ancestors. Alright, one more turn for trade. We've just taken a city. 
And we've got these units here. Let's march them up closer to the remainder of the, the battle here. And if we occupy that settlement, it'll go from a negative 9 to a negative 8. So by having a garrison there plus a general, you'll actually reduce the uh, negative impacts on their order. And we'll go ahead and end turn. After we upgrade a little bit more health on our Thorgrim Grudge Bearer. And that'll be the end of this turn. We'll bring us into turn four. Let us begin! Alright. So, uh, we've got technology improvements. We can go into Masters of Steel and Stone Commandment. Additional minus five. We don't necessarily want to do that. Let's, uh... Look at Diplomatic Relations plus two with all factions. That's pretty good, so let's go ahead and select that. And now that we've got our ability to trade, let's see if we have any trade Relations partners. Relations with foreign powers may be managed through diplomacy, my lord. Consider your situation carefully before accepting any agreement. Okay, so Zuffbar is too far away. We need to get uh, adjoining land in order to trade with them. And yeah, there's nobody else we could trade with at the moment. What? What? All right, so we can chase them to the north here, and that might unite us with some other dwarven tribes, or we can go south. Alright, so because we're a bit far out, I can uh, probably split it up. I'm going to send the, the the bulk of the force down south, and I'm going to reinforce to give these extra three units to them so they have a little bit more in the way of an army. Let's give them full speed at Stance March. And we can actually go under the mountain, but that's not going to take us anywhere. Full speed march. Let's go here. We'll get a little bit closer so we can go under the mountain next turn. For the wisdom of Valea. And this other unit will start recruiting a few more units. We'll get some quarrelers. We might even hand those off to the uh, Thorgrim Grudge Bearer next turn. Uh, no other upgrades we can do right now. We're still in the positive for coin. Let's go ahead and end turn. So we're going to use the underway. Only dwarfs in green skins can use the underway. It's the option right there. Use underway. And if you get ambushed in here and lose the battle, your entire army is wiped out. So that's something to worry about. So let's go under the underway. And we're right there next to Kurg Drawn now. And I forgot to give the quarrelers, didn't I? Alright, so why don't I take this guy through the underway as well. That way I can hand off those quarrelers. Alright, so we actually got intercepted in the underway, but fortunately the bounce power is in our favor, so we're going to auto-resolve. We've slaughtered them. Their entire army is gone now. Let's go ahead and enslave them for a little bit of coin. We'll give him full plate as well. A little extra armor for that unit. Alright, next turn I'll hand off a little bit more in the way of units to the main army. We can upgrade these two settlements to a tier 2, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so I can only do one of them, and the reason is because it costs it costs population surplus. So I've spent the one I had, and now i got to wait for the next turn. And this, uh, this barley field's helping out because I'm getting plus 15 in the way of growth. You can track your growth over here. You see that we're jumping up a little bit more than half 
in the next turn. So after two turns, we should have enough to upgrade yet another. You might try to hold on to them and just upgrade your main tier. That way you can get to higher level units quicker. Alright, so let's go ahead and recruit another lord. So we got a new one. He's got enemy hero actions. I have a minus three chance to succeed. So go ahead and recruit him. I'm going to stick him inside the capital. And we can recruit some quarrelers. My axe thirsts for war. All right, so by recruiting these two, we're going to be in a dangerous spot as far as coin. We're going to be starting to get into the negative. We'll go ahead and do it and hit end turn. So you see we're negative one. So it will take some time, but we can run out of money that way. So we got to be careful that we don't recruit too many more units and don't lose any more land. We're going to merge these the units. And I'm going to take this general back through the underway. Next turn. Maybe I'll leave him at that city. I bring them! Alright, so you see we're conquering a lot of these Gabo territories pretty easily. They don't have very much beyond the garrisons, and because we've been growing our force, we're going to take even fewer casualties when we auto-resolve. Or if we want to fight it out, we can certainly do that. It won't take too long, uh, especially with all these quarrelers. We could fire them down. Now we're getting a little bit more money. Karakron is offering us 1700 for sacking. Looting and occupying is 1098. But we want to occupy. We're going to build up our, our empire here. All of these villages land is going to help us out in uh, income as we push forward. We also want to get these trade resources. So you see timber. This is a good settlement to have just because it's got trade resources. If you scroll up, you can see a little bit more about uh, which city settlements have which trade resources. So you can see I have these uh, gems, gemstones here at Ka uh, Karaza Karak. Uh, nothing here as far as any trade goods and nothing there so really not a whole lot going on besides this new Carrick drawn so you want to look for settlements that have trade resources and try to grab them for yourself you can also look at the strategic overview map and uh, you'll be able to see how things are looking where we're at so we're the yellow here the orange is yellow and so we can see that below us are some green skins that we're at war with we're friendly with the, the dwarves to the north of us, but we're going to have to establish some better uh, relations with them. And then we've got our uh, bloody spears up here on the northeast. So we probably want to secure our northeast with an army and then push out from the, the south and then ca uh, conquer as much of these uh, greenskin territories as we can from the orcs and the goblins. And then we can join the tribes with the dwarves. So that's kind of the strategic here that we're looking at on turn six. And, uh, you know, just quickly you can look through your settlements. So we've got everything going on here just nicely. Happiness is plus three for that. So they're going to remain loyal to us. Their total is negative 15, but they're getting a plus three every turn. So it's all in the good. And then if we look at death pass, we only have one out of the three here. So if we want to get that commandment, we're going to have to capture the iron rock. And that means going to war with the red fangs. And then the Black Crag, which is actually the capital of the Greenskins. So that might be quite a fight, wrestling the Black Crag from the Greenskins. Alright, well we have a very nice army here, and they're healing up. We can't do much more with this fella. We can't take the underway just yet. But we can march him to the east. You'll also notice that we're back in the positive, 93. We're not looking to recruit any more units just at this Summon point. Me if you dare. And we don't, there's no need of us going west since we've got nothing but allies to the west. Let's take a quick look at diplomacy. We do have two dwarven nations and they are friendly. This guy's deteriorating though. So let's see if we can make things a little bit nicer with him. He doesn't 
like us uh, releasing troops, so we got to look at that. Releasing troops is actually going to get us negatives with the other dwarven factions, so let's try not to do that anymore. We'll execute the goblins. Greetings, Kinnaman of the Hold. What can I do for you? Alright, so I can make our arrangement a little bit better by giving him military access. This also allows me to travel over his territories, and he has a high as the likelihood of success. So let's go ahead and see if we can get a little money out of him, too. Demanding a payment, 300 he does gladly. 900 is moderate, so I'm going to switch back to 600. Alright, 600 is still high, so 900 looks to be the sweet spot. So I'm going to hit Propose Offer at 900. He accepts, and now we've got military access. So if I cancel out of this, I can look back over him now. And so we're improving. Now that we've gotten some more agreements going on with him, we're going to have a better luck. We already have military access and non-aggression and trading with Barak Var. We can't get trading just yet with Zephbar, but we can probably... Come, come, kin. Let us feast and drink. ...get a non-aggression pact. All right, so if we do the non-aggression pact, we can again offer some demands since he has a high likelihood of accepting. 600 is the sweet spot. We notice that because it's when it first goes to moderate, very likely that he'll accept. So we go ahead and propose the offer. He's accepted, and now we're a non-aggression pack. So we're getting money here. It's, it's, it's pretty easy, and we're gaining allies. A defensive alliance, he's moderate to it. Let's go ahead and see if he wants to go defensive ally with us. He's accepted. So in order to win as the dwarves, we need to unite the tribes either by having them join us, or by becoming military allies of ours. So your your end goal is to get them to be your military ally or your vassal uh, or join your confederation. So if I offer him join confederation, it's low. He doesn't want to do that. But I can look at the other dwarven faction and, and by, by becoming a defensive ally with him, I got map visibility and so that shows me additional dwarven clans that are out there. Alright, so we now have the ability to do a coordinated war attack because we're a defensive ally. So we can actually set to attack the Bloody Spears. So now Zufbar is going to attack the Bloody Spears, and we're saying that we'll also give troops to attack the Bloody Spears. So pretty neat there. Uh, once you get the Dwarven uh, clans together and defensive alliances, that it all plays out pretty nice. So let's go ahead and initiate a little bit more diplomacy with Zufbar. And what can the Dawi do for you on this fine day? I'm offering him now a military alliance. So we're already defensive allies, and now he wants a military alliance because I'm offering it. It's high, so let's go ahead and add a little bit more to it. He wants to pay us at least 300. Let's see, about 900. That's moderate. If I were to go back to 600, that's moderate as well. So let's go with 600, and we'll get a military alliance. And now we've got one dwarf clan already in our pocket for winning the game, and they're going to help us out as well as their, the way they like us is going to continue to improve. It also increases our strength. If you look at it, we're the second strongest faction in the game now. And having few armies at war and many armies that are, are, are clans that are allied with us is going to help us out greatly. Alright, well, I, I know it wasn't six turns, uh, probably seven turns, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. It's all free to do. It helps me out greatly, and all ad revenue goes towards the kids' college education. Thank you, and I'll catch you next time on Warhammer Total War.